Oh, yeah. They told me we doing the coldest character vid, and I'm up first. And one of the people that came to my mind was Killmonger, and I thought it was perfect. So let's get into it. He really had people believing that they could pull off this hairstyle. Look at Miles. He went from having a clean cut to this shit. It was the opposite of a glow up. It was the dim down. He should have never done it. He even made a custom suit just to show off the hair. Bro, Peter's body language says it all. That shit is straight garbage. You have to burn that shit. And that cut, bro? <laughs> it was not that good for you to remove the top. That shit is gonna be so easy to identify him because no one in the five boroughs has that shit haircut but him. But yeah, that's enough about Miles, but we could see the Killmonger influence has clearly taken its place. But yeah, let's get into it. He had one of those backstories. Bro was outside cooking up on that makeshift hoop created by Hood Jimmy Neutron while his dad was upstairs trying to plan a GTA heist with his friend. But what he didn't know is that he was getting hit with the Wakandan back door. His friend been a spy the whole time. That's tough. They know he stole the vibranium, gave it to Claw, up the mark on him. He couldn't believe it. Bro was getting ready to cry. I felt bad. My bro turned into 2009 Gilbert Arenas, pulled out the secondary and got taken care of in 0.2 seconds. He stood no chance. So after all that's done, young Killmonger after dropping 40 points and still losing, goes into his apartment and sees that his father is Man, taking I'm an dead. eternal nap. Got claws through his shirt. He probably thought his dad got off by El Tigre, but he later learns the truth. T'Challa's dad took him out, so he dedicated the rest of his life to getting into Wakanda and taking the throne. And boy, he did that shit. This man Killmonger is the definition of by any means possible. This is what makes him so cold. Bro went into MIT, graduated, then went into the army, started getting experience and racking up kills, started putting scars on his body. So basically whenever he takes off his shirt, he's flexing his KD. I'm not gonna lie, that is someone I do not want to go against. Cause after you lose, all you could really say is he just wanted it more and there's nothing you could do about it. Like bro, look at how he's all up on this girl right now. Like damn, the food not going anywhere, relax. You would think watching that he somewhat cares about her. Nah. Cause when it was time to take out Claw, Brody turned into Sasuke. Claw takes her as a hostage and he like, it's okay. Everything will be all right. With this line ass because the next scene he proceeds to shoot him through her. She closed her eyes and woke up in hell confused. She knew she was dealing with the man on a mission, but she didn't know she wasn't a part of it. That's tough. Shit, he must have told her he's going to be the king of Wakanda and she started chuckling. Cause I don't know what else would make her get treated like Kari. Bro tried running away and started slipping and I knew it was raps. And on crime, my boy started cheesing and started taking head glitches. And he still got a hole put in him like Spongebob. <laughs> Brody started leaning like it was Rainbow Six. And Claw is sitting there wondering why they would let his ass in. He talking to him like, brother, you're not Wakanda. Then he shows him the mark, proving that he'd be accepted in. And now Claw got that damn bro, you got it face. Then gets blicked. And now it's time to get to what we've all been waiting for. His appearance into Wakanda. Using Claw's dead, cold body to get in, he stands face to face with the higher ups, and this is where he just started cooking. T'Challa walks up and asks him what he wants. He proceeds to look at the seat and says the throne. Or look at this man T'Challa, my boy felt disrespected. Everybody else in the background laughing at his ass, and Killmonger standing there saying, ask me who I am. My boy T'Challa said, nah, send this man away, they can't know. And I'm not gonna lie, that's a risky play because there's too many people in the room for there not to be one instigator. So this man in green ass, and he reveals that he's the son of a prince, got that royal blood, got this man T'Challa and this bitch sweating. Then Killmonger hits the iconic, hey auntie, and challenges T'Challa to a one-on-one, -on -one, and he accepts it. And let's really look at the situation T'Challa got put in. He really got his legacy on the line with his mom, his sister, and his ex watching this shit. And, uh, he gets cooked. Killmonger ducks under the attack, slices him, and makes him kneel. Killmonger just like, damn, bro, you supposed to be the king, but you're the one kneeling. Blocks his attack, gets up, and gets his shit sliced again. I'm not gonna lie, when I first watched Black Panther, this was hard to look at. Man was getting a hard counter. Another block, gets sliced again. You know what's bad when the home team is silent. You're cooked. He hits the dagger on T'Challa, and from this point on, it's just straight embarrassment. Hits two left hooks, setting him into the water, and the ass whooping got so bad that the truth got set free. Zuri comes out, stops his attack, and he's just like, It was me. I back towards your father. Take me instead. Okay. Stabs him too. Bro didn't ask for the details or nothing. I don't even think he knows how badly he actually greased him. But hey. He moved on and went back to embarrassing T'Challa. And this gotta be one of the most disrespectful scenes in the MCU. Zuri's death got him wildly swinging. To which Killmonger hits the- Is this your game? 
not once, but twice. Is this your kid? And I'm not gonna lie, from this point on, he started hitting him with WWE moves, walking around and talking to the crowd. I can't lie to you, this is nasty work and it still hurts to watch. But hey, you just gotta recognize game, whether you like it or not. He puts him on his back, walks him down to the cliff, and tosses him off the map to take fall damage, completely and utterly violating him, allowing him to finally accomplish his mission and take the throne. Yeah, I'm done. I don't know who's next, but uh, yeah, go ahead. What is that? I ain't even gonna yap too much. We're gonna get right into it. DJ, play my shit. What's happening, TC? Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Now, I think we could all agree the Dragon Ball sequel series, that shit was trash, my nigga. Obviously, some stuff I like, and this is one of the only good things to come out of GT. This transformation is just too cold, man. I remember watching this back with my homeboys, and they were seeing Shemmel scream, and they were like, well, damn. And this shit get good and i was just like just wait a minute it wasn't tapped in like me goku was three for three with these transformations i know he was about to hit a four p when i heard shemmel hitting this in the booth giant eight find out Mother the next episode. don't miss and when they unveiled this transformation this is when i knew dragon ball was for real niggas only you got goku pulling up in the all red fur niggas will wear anything if it's designer messy ass hair like he gave chi chi some devious strokes and red eyeliner if you took the details I just described and imagined it in your head, image probably sound crazy. But nah, they made one of the hardest designs to ever step out this franchise. Whenever he pull up, he's always out saucing the opponent, no matter who it is. You a baby, he booming you. You a nigga, he booming you. You his niece, you know what I'm saying? That's stop, cause he booming you. It don't matter, it's free smoke out here. Hold that. This man has the coldest kills in the series. This man talks so nasty to the niggas that try to press him. It's like it came out of scripture. He just moves cold as hell. That's a real ass nigga in my book. Next up, Green Goblin. Now the Green Goblin, Willem Dripfo, whatever you want to call him. This nigga is crazy. Every appearance, every iteration of this man is just raw. The death of Gwen Stacy is one of the most influential comics of all time. And there's a reason why Green Goblin killed her. He was the only nigga cold enough to do it. You telling me Rhino's doing this? <laughs> Nah, shit just ain't possible. If you are Spider-Man, it's on site. It don't matter. He saw Tom Holland with that suit on. He said, nigga It started cooking this shit. I'm talking throwing him like a rag doll. Molly whopping little bro through three floors. Killed his aunt and almost had Zendaya dancing. Shake it up with Iron Man. I was like, nah. What this Bitmoji really built nigga? ass nigga do to make you that mad? You don't even know him, gang. And the Peter he did know, he did even worse. This man is so about his fate. He put a building on fire. Dressed up as a grandma and started screaming. Just to make sure Spider-Man pulled up on him. And if he did this to, I don't know, land a fatal blow, lure him into a trap. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's a, a great, great idea. idea. I'm what with that. that. No. He did all this shit just Yay. to land a free <laughs> hit. Like my dog. You don't gain shit from this. And when he explains his motive to Spider-Man, I was like, nah. Goblin, why are you doing this? I genuinely do not want to see niggas succeed. Like, I want to hurt niggas. And once I realized that's all he wanted, I was like, nah. This the coldest nigga alive. And for the last one, I'm not gonna lie, we going all the way back. <laughs> Green Ranger, one of the toughest niggas alive. First off, he got a top three white boy name ever. He got the Margella fit dripped out, and he is in that field 24-7. I'm talking the first time he pulled up, he saw the Megazord and hit this 80-inch ass vert. He gets in there, boom gangs they shit, and then whips them out they own V. Like, how you getting ran out your own whip? Embarrassing. <laughs> Wouldn't let it happen to me, though. <laughs> and he immediately starts hitting the 1v5. No hesitation at all. Hitting these suplex kicks like, damn, you acrobatic ass nigga. You got it! Ren Ranger seeing his friends get fleece, he's talking about some. You think you're so tough? Take me up! And my goat started cheesing, he knew Red was not about it, he hit him with the. And he was doing this man like Lightning McQueen, I was watching this tight. Oh and he ends it off hitting this. Ass finishing move, who this nigga think he is? Blasted right at him and hits this finisher pose. Like my nigga, you not in Smash. You really think on windscreen by the pop up? Alright, I'm done. Passing it off. Now I know there's a lot of Iron Man fanboys out there, and hear me out. You don't gotta like the racist, but you have to admit, Steve Rogers is one cold motherfucker. This man in Endgame had all his teammates either turned into a good DC movies catalog, straight dust, or knocked out. Ten Man is slumped, Spider Man is nowhere to be found, and Thor is dead ass fine, but he's pretending like he's knocked out so he doesn't have to get up and do any more cardio fighting. Captain America peeps Thanos and his entire army in front of him and shows that he's just the type of man to stand on business, one man army. 
my man tightened his strap and was really ready to take on 50k villains by himself. Now he would have gotten his shit clapped, they was looking at him like free food. But this type of heart is unmatched, especially considering what Thanos did to him the last time they seen each other. After catching a hook that mean, I would have been thinking to myself like, damn, maybe only half the population isn't that bad for real. But the thing is, even before the steroids, Captain America always had that heart in him. Drill Sergeant is straight tweaking, throwing a live grenade out in front of everybody, and peep how all the other soldiers are running away like the baby just tried to play his music. While his entire platoon turned into Prime Usain Bolt, Steve dove on that bitch, telling the rest of them to go save themselves. That's a real nigga right there. He was ready to tank that hit by himself. Now in hindsight, the grenade was like this man's jewelry. That shit was fake. Go in the shower with it, your neck for the turn green. But Steve didn't know that. The other soldiers didn't know that. The only person who knew it was the drill sergeant. I could also mention how Steve was in the elevator just trying to clock out from his shift like a normal person. Suddenly out of nowhere, there was 18 niggas in here and he knew they were up to no good. Started hitting his best Uncle Ruckus impression staring at the black man in the corner. He even gave them boys a warning. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Now listen! That's called motherfucking bars, nigga! Fucking you know nothing about that! And he just started getting busy on these boys, getting to work. There's not even any space in here, zero elbow room, and it doesn't matter, they should have sent more. I could also mention another moment, like when Cap was facing against Batroc. And Batroc must have thought he was pussy or something, told him, hey, if you're not scared, put the shield down. Steve looked at him like, oh, say less. <laughs> Look at the combo work he putting in on this man. We? Batroc thought he found the cheat code right. telling Steve to put the shield down, but he clearly wasn't aware of the fact that Steve got the best hands in the MCU. Look at him, just standing there staring at this man, taunting him into a crazy X triangle square right. up combo, knocking his ass out to the ground. And today I got time, cuz, so we gonna talk about Bardock too. Now you know, if the greatest anime protagonist of all time was gonna be birthed, it was gonna have to be from a straight G. So the Saiyans are straight low bro on their own planet, Frieza's foot soldiers giving them wedgies in the hallway and all that. The Doria, the legendary fridge protector, got this Saiyan by the collar straight dangling while the whole squad is in the background laughing. But they made a huge mistake because Bardock was on his way and upon landing and hopping out the pod, look at the fucking drip bro. He uses his scouter to pull up to the scene and finds his homie laid out like a mattress. They snuck us twin. It was dead like 30 of them on God. Why the fuck you lying? And this might be the coldest shit in Dragon Ball Z history, bro. Bardock takes out a rag and wipes the blood off his homie's face. The goons still over there laughing like some shit funny, but Bardock hops in his Miami Heat LeBron bag, tying that shit around his fucking head as a headband. I guess it's a prerequisite that if you have this face, you automatically have to be badass. Only exception is Goten, but I mean, I could list off some cool moments he had real quick. Anyways, moving on, Bardock starts putting these boys in a spin cycle. They literally have scouters. I don't know if those bitches are broken or something, because this is not a fight they should have taken. He's clearly out their weight class. Not only did he bust their ass, but he found out about Frieza's plan to eradicate the Saiyans, and he pulls up on him. Bro, look at how many niggas they sent just to try to stop him. He was talking shit too, this was personal. You coward, come out! After a while of being trapped in a one versus two million, Frieza comes out and of course all the other soldiers got to dick riding, but Bardock is like, man, screw this lesbian. Frieza, all of us Saiyans quit. Find somebody else to do your dirty work. Not gonna lie, the rest of the Saiyans was probably looking like, we, bro, who's we? There was no meeting or nothing, I wanna live. We ultimately know how Bardock goes out, but man, 